kind of raining on me. Little ice chips. It's an amazing time hunting mushrooms today. Thanks for watching this wild edible video, and I hope that it helps you get more acquainted with some of the most abundant wild edible foods that are easiest to identify. These are very plentiful in the southeastern region of America, but most species that I'll be going over are very common in places that have a moderate climate. This will be a great video for beginner foragers, but my knowledge comes from very old ways of life, including Native American and Amish teachings, so I'm sure that everybody's going to be able to get something from it. Please leave any comments on anything else that you want to share about, especially about any wild edibles that are used for staple foods or easy to distinguish. This is going to be somewhat of a jam-packed, fast-paced video, so you may want to be ready to take notes and or screenshots. Here we have the beech tree, and these are beech tree buds. They are an edible tree bud um, that you, you can harvest through the winter. There's many tree buds that you can harvest freshly every day throughout the winter. Some including redbud, sassafras, maple, aspen, spruce, fir, black birch, pine, basswood, and elm. Do your research though. There are a couple of toxic trees that you definitely do not want to consume that are loaded with tannins. Uh, a couple I could think of, the yew and cherry trees. Here we have honeysuckle leaves, which are a good trailside nibble. You don't want to consume too much of these raw, but you can boil them and consume large amounts of them. In the summertime, when eating honeysuckles, I advise eating the entire flower because it has a lot of antioxidants and nutrients in it that you can't really find in most modern day food from the grocery store. Now this video is going to cover things from mid to late summer through the winter into early spring that you can forage. Here are jelly mushrooms. They're actually available year round. There are a few different colors of jelly fungus. Uh, here's this purplish kind and here's the yellow. There's also white or clear. I know the white and clearish um, jelly is used topically. Uh, a lot of people put it in salves. It has a lot of medicinal value topically as well as edibility. Here are ear mushrooms that I was dehydrating. They are the choice edible mushroom out of the jelly fungus species. Um, the jelly funguses don't really have much flavor, but they have a lot of medicinal value. Here we have nettle. There's most commonly stinging nettle and wood nettle. I've heard from many teachers that it may be the most vitamin and mineral packed plant there is to forage in the wild. It is really good in, as a tea after you've dried it out. Um, and when making the tea you, uh, fresh, you can use the greens as you would eat them like turnip greens after you've gotten the juice or the water from them to make the tea from and surprisingly, the tea and the uh, greens are for really, really good. When boiling or steaming the net stinging nettle, it deactivates the stinging ne needles on them to where um, they're actually practically gone at that time, and you can consume them. Always wear gloves when handling before you cook it. It's also known as itchweed or stingweed. It has also been known to be used for cordage. It's a very strong cordage. It's a um, kind of viney if you pull it up. It actually is growing along the ground like a vine. Here's uh, some that I was dehydrating for tea. When uh, plucking the stinging nettle, you always just pull the tops or if it's only about three inches high, you can eat the whole plant. The rest is no normally too fibrous. Here we have some green onions, wild green onions. People use them for chives, or you can dig them up, but always just take a third of the plants that you take from the wild, especially onions, because they're uh, 
not going to regrow if you pull them up and eat the bulbs. You can find green onions year-round. Um, some other onions in the wild that you can forage are scallions or ramps or leeks. Onions are a good root vegetable that you can harvest or stock up on. I'll be talking about a few more root vegetables. But before winter, you want to try and stock up on as many root vegetables, berries, nuts, plants, plants for teas, and mushrooms as possible before winter. You can dehydrate and can many of these foods. Another beneficial thing you can do from January to February is tap trees for their sap. They can be drank or simmered down to a, a syrup like maple syrup. You can tap maple, birch, black walnut, butternut, and sycamore trees are the most common, preferably trees that are 18 inches in diameter. So do your research on them. We've been looking at chickweed here, which I would say is one of most foragers' favorites. It's a very tender plant that goes good in all meals. Add it to anything, especially salads and coleslaws. It's jam-packed with minerals and different vitamins such as C, D, and B vitamins. It's been known to reduce inflammation and good for healing the thyroid, cysts, and glands. When identifying a pine tree, just make sure they have long needles. Um, if it's not the correct tree, they'll have short needles about this long versus long. If you want to uh, take cambium, the inner bark from a pine without uh, people seeing or uh, make an eyesore, you can pull the branches down and get it from the top of the branches and the top of the limb there. That way nobody can see it. And uh, never cut uh, the bark all the way around. It will kill the tree. The tree will not be able to grow past that point anymore and it kills the whole tree usually. But what you're gonna wanna do is uh, make a patch uh, usually up and down, you know, not going around the whole tree, but up and down. I know my broken knife, it's good for stuff like this. So, <laughs> uh, so you're just going to shave into this first layer. And you're getting into that canyon right there. And that's definitely as wide of a patch as... I need to cut. Wide of an area. Alright, and here's your good stuff. So you can just kind of peel it like that. And uh, you can grind it up uh, into powder after you dry it. And make it into flour or you can dry it like this and kind of make potato chips if you dry it over the fire or bake it um, it's not all that tasty but it is a source of nutrients cambium pine cambium you can also fry, season and fry the pine cambium like potato chips you can also use pine sap for tea and cambium is usually available year round other trees that are most common to eat cambium out of are maple poplar elm and willow here we've been looking at some wild garlic mustard greens you can find it through the winter and spring it's a choice edible plant you can eat it raw in salads or sandwiches it's like a mustard and garlic substitute it's loaded with minerals and vitamins such as A, C, E, and B, and omega-3 acids. You can also cook it like greens. It's good for your metabolism, lowers cholesterol, and an anti-carcinogenic. Here we're looking at purple dead nettle. 
It's great, boiled as a green, and very plentiful. It's also good in smoothies. It has high amounts of minerals like iron and vitamins and antioxidants. It's found uh, from the winter, especially into the spring, and is renowned for alleviating allergies and considered to be antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory. I mainly use it in, te in teas. It's a great green tea tasting tea just like this hen bit here hen bit looks a lot like nettle and is super good in tea and always make sure it has a square stem to properly identify it is in the mint family so it has a square stem these greens are also good in smoothies and juices they are this uh, hen bit is rich in vitamins and minerals such as iron it has always been known to reduce fever alleviate joint pain constipation and reduced stress and can usually only find it from the winter or late fall to spring here we're looking at plantain it is one of the most healing plants in the world it's packed with vitamins and minerals and it also helps regrow skin cells so people use it in a lot of salves it has always been well known for healing cuts burns sunburns bug and animal bites acne and is good for your hair and the scalp I've also heard that baking them like grape leaves with seasonings and oil is also a great way of consuming them. You can eat them as greens as well, put them in smoothies or juices. Um, Indians have always used them for snake bites and stings and um, especially cuts. Here is one everyone knows, the dandelion, but did you know that it's anti-carcinogenic? and has been known to heal the, the the root anyway has been known to heal the liver kidneys skin arthritis gout eczema hypertension and indigestion it's very high in minerals such as folate magnesium phosphorus and copper and vitamins such as a c e k and b6 you can consume the entire plant the yellow flowers can be put into salads or battered and fried for a snack the leaves are choice edible salad mix and good in anything. And the large roots are able to be dried and added to teas. Or a lot of people use it as a coffee substitute and they'll mix it with chicory root as well when they do that. It is one of the roots that you want to harvest in the fall before the winter. Before it disappears. Here's another root vegetable. Uh, dock. Uh, the most commonly yellow or curly dock that you'll find the leaves are for really really good uh, boiled um, or raw in salads and the roots are a great potato substitute it's all around a very choice edible plant and tastes very well it has also been known to cure diseases and fever and diarrhea it reduces stomach acid and heartburn it has been known to heal the liver kidneys helps digestion anemia it's been used topically for skin disorders such as burns and you can use it as a bandage and dock leaves are extremely high in vitamin c and minerals such as iron here we have sunchokes or jerusalem artichokes a very good staple food you use the roots uh, or tubers that are on the roots and you can eat them like a potato substitute they've been used for many years to regulate blood pressure and are rich in minerals and vitamins such as potassium or minerals such as potassium and iron as well as antioxidants and has been known to be anti-carcinogenic also has been known to improve gut health and you collect it in the fall before the first frost here are some tubers collected just the other day here we have partridge berries they are another crop that you can have year-round especially throughout the winter and surprisingly they are an antihistamine and have been known to heal liver ailments you'll find them along the forest floor you'll see these little viney leaves with these little red berries they usually have a couple little 
navels or indentions on them. They don't have much flavor, but what flavor they do have is very well. They're packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. You can find them year-round. Here we're looking at turkey tail mushrooms. It may be one of the most anti-carcinogenic mushrooms found in the world. It has been known to cure breast cancer and many other cancers when taken in large quantity. I love making a decoction out of these, uh, which is where you simmer them for 15 to 30 minutes to get the medicinal properties out of them into a tea. They taste pretty good. They have very strong immune boosting properties. They prevent and treat infections, tumors, colds, viruses such as flu and HPV and cancer. Many cancers. They can only be collected in the fall and early winter. They'll start having speckled dots underneath when they are too old. Here we have the most important mushroom you need to know, the deadly gallerina. It's a little brown mushroom and therefore you might want to stay away from all little brown mushrooms just to avoid this one. Do your research on this one. There are only a couple of deadly or a few deadly mushrooms out there. So I'll always do your research on those first so you can be safe with the rest. Here we have a choice edible staghorn mushrooms, which most people are not familiar with. They contain high anti-tumor properties. They are a choice edible to some, including myself. When fried, uh, battered and fried, they're like mushroom fries. And they are best added to noodle recipes for a noodle replacement. They're like meaty noodles and they taste wonderful. Here we have the pear-shaped puffball. It's the smaller puffball mushrooms. They have uh, small uh, these and you have giant puffballs. These are most common down here in Tennessee. To make sure that you have a edible puffball mushroom and it's not past its prime or the wrong kind, you split it open as I've done here to see it's solid white inside. They are a choice edible to some. Great added in any recipe where button mushrooms are used. You can find them from the summer through the fall. They are great in pastas and I might add that some people that have hypersensitive allergies are sometimes uh, slightly or allergic to puffballs, staghorns, and morel mushrooms or commonly known as dryland fish mushrooms. Next we have the hen of the woods or maitake mushroom which is a choice edible by most all foragers and mushroom seekers. It is a very versatile mushroom in the kitchen and can be cooked in so many dishes it's unreal. It's packed full of polysaccharides which are the anti-carcinogenic agents in edible mushrooms which most all edible mushrooms contain and is also loaded with nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. One of my favorites. It's usually found around the base of oak trees. Here we have the hedgehog mushroom and I'm also going to show you chanterelle mushrooms. The chanterelles are a fall skill mushroom that have ridges underneath them rather than true gills. They are not a beginner's mushroom but they are quite frequently found around the hedgehog so I put them together. Do your research on the chanterelles. But the hedgehogs however are an easy beginner's mushroom. They have that hedgehog back like appearance underneath them which is very easy to distinguish and Hedgehogs and chanterelles are choice edibles. They can be found around hemlock trees, usually in the spring and the fall. They're a very plentiful mushroom. Once you find them, you usually find more than one. They're a very meaty tasting mushroom. Here we have ink cap mushrooms, which are a deliquescent mushroom. That means they turn into like a goo when they decompose. The choice edible out of ink caps is called the shaggy mane. Uh, most ink cap mushrooms are not choice edibles though. They can be used, however, for ink. If you have um, a stick or a feather to write with, they turn into ink within hours or minutes after being plucked. Here we have the beautiful lion's mane mushroom 
It is believed that it has higher medicinal benefits than most mushrooms. It's been called one of the most brain-boosting and cancer-fighting mushrooms of all time. It is proven to help cardio and neuroprotect be neuroprotective and an antibiotic and to be anti-diabetic, anti-fatigue, anti-hypertensive, anti-carcinogenic, and have anti-aging properties. It is also frequently consumed or used to fight depression and anxiety and to improve cognitive function. You can find this mushroom in the late summer to early winter and it tastes a little like crab or seafood. Make sure you don't overcook this one. It is best in any kind of cream sauce dishes or pastas in my opinion. There are a few different kinds of lion's mane that you want to look up on. Here we have anokitake or anoki mushrooms. They are a choice edible by most mushroom seekers and have been used to treat ulcers and tumors when eaten in large quantity. And is primarily a winter mushroom that can be found from the fall to the spring. I might add they look nothing like the farm-raised enokis that they grow in side in jars. You can see how they fruit out of clusters. It is not really a beginner's mushroom since it is brown and can resemble the deadly guy rhino. Here we have my favorite, the oyster mushrooms. This is the winter species or snow oyster species. There are different species of oysters that can be found year-round and they don't have many look-alikes and is definitely a great beginner's mushroom. A great tasting mushroom as well. It can be used in any type of meat substitute, in any recipe, even um, as a steak or hamburger. You could grill it. Uh, you can dry saute it and soak up any kind of seasoning such as um, chicken or steak seasonings. Frozen oysters. Here's how it's done. <laughs> so, you break from the top down. There you have it. There we go. Nice cluster here. On the side of a mountain. <laughs> Lovely day in the snow. This mushroom can also be used as a jerky and it actually tastes as good as deer or beef jerky in my opinion. It has very high medicinal properties in it such as some to strengthen veins, relax tendons, joints, and muscles. A quick note I want to tell you before I forget is another thing to collect in the fall is the wood and seed pods from the mesquite tree for smoking meats and making syrup from the pods to season anything from pancakes to steaks. Here we have the Belit mushroom, which is an extremely huge species of mushroom. It has many, many kinds. Luckily, none of them are supposed to be deadly. Some are toxic and some are extremely choice edible mushrooms. So do your research on Belitz. It's about all I could say in this video. Here we have a whole lot of oyster mushrooms as well as some pictures of the Belitz. Here is some oysters that I am dehydrating as jerky. Most people couldn't even tell the difference between that or beef. Here we have deer mushrooms. Deer mushrooms are going to be found in the late winter, approaching the spring. They have a salmon pink spore color, and they smell like radishes, similar to radishes when they're raw. That flavor cooks away when cooked. 
Here we have uh, cedar berries that are good as a trail side nibble or best in teas, as well as the spice bush uh, berries that I'm about to show you are good in teas as well. Good to harvest before the first frost so you can stock up on them for the winter. The spice bush has alternating leaves. The stems and twigs can be used for tea. They are very potent. Uh, the buds, the leaves, and the berries as well all have the same flavor. It has been used for a number of years in teas and tonics for ridding of parasites, worms, candida, and also used to combat coughs, colds, fever, colic, and cramps. It's also used as an aromatic or incense and you can use it year round as the oysters, partridge berries, onions, and jelly funguses could be used year round. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you want more.